All right. So in V-Ray 3, Chaos Group has implemented uh, open shading language, uh, so also this OSL. And that is uh, actually a Sony open source project, and it is a collection of libraries and through a C++ API to create new shaders. Um, and it's another one of the awesome Sony projects that go along with uh, Alembic and OpenColorIO and uh, all sorts of awesome stuff. So if you uh, go to the Chaos Group documentation, you can see that there's already some examples here. And so the way it works is you download this complex IOR uh, .zip file, and it will come with the .osl file. And I've actually already uh, gotten that. And let me, see, let me load it up here. Uh, it's going to be in the textures chapter metal section and OSL folder. And you can see if I just opened that up, it's just going to be exactly what's already on the website. And uh, so you can see there's the code right here. And what this does is it gives us a N and K value. And so the N and K are going to be uh, dr being driven by some values that we get from uh, this amazing website, refractiveindex.info. And you can see that we have 1 for the N is the refractive index, and then the extinction coefficient is what the K means. And now I am no scientist, so I can't really explain what those equations do. But uh, if you scroll down here, so you can see I've actually got three of them loaded up, and we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, what's really cool is you can see that they already have a section on their website uh, for 3D selected data. So you can see we've got aluminum, lead, platinum, silver, all sorts of stuff. Uh, you can also go up to main if you want to, and you can see we've got a whole bunch of different things. Not all of these have the F N and K values that we're going to need, just so you know. But the ones for 3D artists definitely do. Uh, but what's really cool about this, if we scroll down, you can see in this reflection calculator what the red, green, and blue curves are actually doing across the, sur uh, across the surface based on the Fresnel. So you can see here is our angle of incidence. And so uh, you can see in, let's see, what am I in right now? So this is aluminum. Let me go to gold. Uh, on gold, we start getting some different curves happening, uh, and we'll actually get different color values across the edges of surfaces, which will be really awesome. Uh, so to use this properly, um, V-Ray does talk about this on their uh, documentation as well. You can see that you need to plug in the red, green, and blue wavelengths, and they tell you uh, what to use, which is 0 0.65, 0 0.55, and 0.45. Um, I talked to a friend of mine, and uh, I actually got uh, different values, and so depending on all sorts of stuff, uh, you could also use these. Um, supposedly, uh, these are real-world values, according to him. Uh, this is where it gets a little weird. If you look it up on Wikipedia, there's actually a, a significant range that red, green, and blue can be in. Um, and this is where I'm not able to give too much information on what to use. But uh, you can try all sorts of stuff and experiment with it. And just play around. And the really cool thing about this is you're actually going to get a separation across the surface in the different, in the color. You can actually see this in here, like on the inside of the mouth of this dragon, there's some more saturated red values. And that's really the key here is that we want to be, we want to be getting some of that. Um, it's really cool. So, all right, so let's get started. And, uh, I've actually done a lot of the work for you and I'm going to be giving you some cool stuff. Um, and uh, let's get our three set up here. So the, the first thing, uh, so right here, you can type in your wavelength. So we'll do 0.63. So that's our red, and this is gold. And so over here on gold, uh, so this is going to be my green, so 0.532. And you always want to set your metal. And then we've got our blue, which is going to be 0.46. Wonderful. So you can see that we now have our N and K, respectively, for our red, green, and blue. And so I like to work exactly like this. So I have these three, uh, these three Explorer windows up. So I'm going to move them over to the other monitor, and I'll get them plugged in. So let's go ahead 
and uh, I'm going to our brass shader that we were just working on. Uh, let's go ahead and duplicate this out. So we'll duplicate special, duplicate input graph. Sweet. And now what we're going to do is on this, uh, we're actually going to, uh, let's go ahead and bring that out. Uh, oh, need to get it assigned to our pieces here. There we go. So we'll call this dirty gold. Actually, I'll put OSL at the front of it for you. So this will be dirty gold. And I want to get that on my shading group name as well. Sweet. All right, so we're going to create a V-Ray V -ray texture OSL. Uh, cool. So first we need to load in our shader file. And that's going to be in our source images, uh, textures chapter, metal OSL complex IOR, straight from Chaos Group. And you can see in our shader attributes now we have some values. And if I remember correctly, the defaults are actually gold. And well, they might be close. We'll see what the defaults look like. So the key here is that right now the color output is set to result, and result is not the same thing that we have as the, uh, the variable in the shader. So if you click this little down arrow, you can see we've got color out. And there is no alpha with this. It's just going to return pure color. So over here on our remap ramp, I want the brightest area of this gold to now be this V-Ray Texture OSL. Actually, I, so uh, before we do that, I do want to create a gamma correct node. And I need to gamma correct this down because these values are not going to be correct for our current working space. So these textures, these color swatches before were a little bit different because I was dialing them in the render and getting them to look correct. But this one, because it's uh, actually going to be this open shading language, I need it to be a little bit different. Um, cool. So let's go ahead and, oh, so that needs to be color out. And now you can see we've got that. Uh, see how it even looks a little desaturated in the color swatch? So that needs to get gamma corrected, and then it'll go down in. And for right now, I'm going to store this color, and I'm just going to get rid of it, and I'm just going to have... Uh, only that ramp. Uh, actually, even just to make sure that it's working, I can just connect that gamma correction directly into my shader. We'll get the map, the map back in there in a second. And let's let it rip. So <laughs> I think I might be wrong. I think the default values might be copper. So let me plug in my values that I had on our N and K. And we'll get that in there. So hold on one second. All right, so we've got our oops, so we've got our n, which is going to be. I'm just going to speed this up. You can see I'm just typing those numbers straight from the refractive index info website. So that does look a little more yellow now. So let's see what we get, and we'll return on that IPR, and hopefully it'll be a nice richer gold. Cool, yeah, it's looking better. And just so you can really see what's going on, I'm just going to connect. Uh, I'm going to. I passed the, the dirtiness right now real quick so you can actually see what that looks like in a more raw form. We'll leave the bump map on there because that's kind of a nice detail. Uh, but I wanted to, so yeah, so that's looking pretty cool. And uh, it's looking very nice. I definitely like it a lot. And what I wanted to bring up is how to work with these because it's kind of weird, right? If I have these just values, um, I can push and pull them a little bit but I don't, I, I don't really know how to control this uh, by just changing these numbers because I'm not a scientist and I highly doubt any of you are going to go in and you can, of course, fiddle with these numbers. You can see if I start messing with uh, the, the different channels, like if I raise the blue way up, so I set this to 5, it will, you can see right here in the swatch that it got very purpley and it will do some very interesting things. Uh, so let me return on the IPR there. 
So yeah, so you can get some really, uh, really awesome effects with it. But what I would predict is a little bit more common. Let me set this back to our 1.755. Uh, what I predict is more common is that you're going to want to very slightly shift this with a hue or saturation. Um, and let me go ahead and it doesn't want to update in the IPR, which is kind of annoying. Uh, so if we've got this V-Ray Texture OSL, I can create a remap HSV and I can connect this in. And then that can go in my gamma correct node, like so. So we've got our V-Ray text OSL into remap HSV into a gamma correct. And now I can go in and I can saturate this a bit if I want to, or desaturate it. But I'm going to saturate this a tiny bit. And now I'm going to roll the hue around a little bit. And there we go. So now you can see pulling the hue over point saturation over gave me a little bit yellower gold and that's looking pretty cool and where you'll really find this gives you some really interesting effects so and so that that's feeling a little too green to me now there we go it's looking a little bit better but where you really start getting some cool stuff going on uh, is when you have the edge pixels reflecting and you'll start getting some different colors going through there um, so that's looking beautiful. And now let's go ahead and reconnect up our V-Ray bump. Or sorry, our V-Ray blend. And we can we can adjust some of these uh, textures a little bit. So I don't really want this to be green, greenish anymore. I want this to be a little bit darker. So I'm going to connect this. Uh, I need a gamma node here. Since this is... This is going to be really dark. So we'll redial it once we get that actually connected in there. And we'll wait for that to update. So that's feeling nice and dirty. Uh, and I can bounce some of these values back up. And so now I've got that nice old gold. Uh, and I could even go into my layer texture here my remap ramp uh, sorry this remap ramp right here uh, I could even start you know dialing some of that down so I get a little bit more of the I don't ever have any of the solid area so much uh, you know I could even start messing with this dial that even further down so it's a little subtler a little more subtle yeah, so that's feeling cool. So now it just feels kind of dirty. It doesn't really feel so much like there's piled up grime on top of it, uh, which I like. So what I highly recommend doing is now you've got this gold. So we'll say this is gold OSL. And you can save this as a preset. So you don't have to search out those, uh, you don't have to go searching all that out over and over again. And you can get those N and K values saved out. So uh, let me load in the brass one. All right, so let me stop this IPR. So you can see in this file, and I'll make sure it gets saved here. So this is going to be Chapter 4 Material Types, Metal Part 2 OSL. You will find uh, this is our aluminum OSL. Uh, and our swatches don't appear to be <laughs> correct. That, that doesn't look right. Um, but we've got aluminum, copper, and brass that's going to be in this file. And so I can actually just go in here. And so I've, I've duplicated this shader out already. Um, so this is going to be, where's our, so this is OSL Dirty Gold 1. So I'm going to call this Dirty Brass. And we'll go in and our uh, OSL Dirty Brass. I'm just going to map in my brass gamma correction here. And now let's go ahead and on this brass OSL, uh, let's make sure this renders correctly and then we'll save a preset.
my Maya crashed on me. I wanted to let you know to always save your file uh, before you hit that IPR button because this can happen all the time. Back in action. Uh, I mean, that's just amazing. So the, the note editor, you can see this is our OSL Dirty Brass. And let me get my attribute editor back up. Uh, wherever that's at. Oh, sorry, got it. There we go. Uh, I mean, it's just beautiful. Totally, totally beautiful. And so I'm going to duplicate out my shader one last time here. I'm sure you're getting sick of watching me duplicate the same shader over and over again. But uh, hopefully it'll just be really valuable for you to have uh, this sitting here. Um, so let's duplicate input connections. Select objects again. Assign that one. Uh, cool. So this is going to last. Uh, we'll do this as our dirty copper. This one's actually not last. We're going to do aluminum as well. So this is going to be dirty copper. And you're going to go to our other tab here. I'm going to map in that copper. And you can see I've, I went in on that site and I got these values off of it. Uh, the brass was hard to find, just so you guys know. You're going to definitely have to do some digging on the Internet. Uh, the brass is not on that other website, but I was able to find it, and I'm sure you'll be able to also. Um, that website I cannot just show on the video, though. But you'll find it some, with some smart Googling. You'll find it. Or you can use that, and it's fine. Um, back to where we were. So let's go to our dirty copper. And I need to map my copper gamma correction in there. The nice thing is there's just no guesswork on these colors. You know, it's like I was going in and just manually dialing and you saw me nudging that hue around trying to get it perfect. And this is just like amazingly perfect. Um, the ever so subtle shift in the red, green, and blue values is really what sells this. And it feels almost like I just have a raw color in there, but this would be a really difficult uh, color to really get. I don't know if you'd be able to get this exact color without going in and having these values in there. Uh, you would get really close, of course. Uh, you just have to figure out exactly what that color is. But having this as a baseline to go off of, like that totally feels like dirty copper right now. Um, the aluminum is going to be the least impressive. I probably shouldn't end on it, but we're going to anyway. So the aluminum, same deal. Uh, last time, duplicate special. And we'll rename this to our dirty aluminum. And we'll swap in that reflection color. Um, the aluminum I did just want to show because it's kind of cool. It just has a, uh, a different quality to it. It has a subtle bit of blue in it. And it does just, it feels pretty nice again. And it just has that metal quality that uh, you're always trying to get to. You can see it. there's this ever so subtle shift on the edge to this uh, bluer color. And otherwise it feels like a normal metal shader. But that one I would be very comfortable just getting on my own. But generally speaking, uh, it's pretty cool to just have this. And the amazing thing is that you can go in and you can start saving these presets for yourself. So uh, I can go in and this one will be aluminum. Save that preset. And then we'll do our copper. And then you can do that brass. Um, and you can go on, remember you can go on uh, refractiveindex.info and they've got lots of stuff on here. So in the 3D section alone, we've got aluminum, copper, iron. Iron would be pretty cool. Uh, lead, mercury, platinum, silver, and titanium. Uh, and then if you go up into main here, there's even more. Um, specifically, uh, some of these other things like um, the, the key is that you want to make sure that when they were measuring, uh, so 
this page refers to, I believe, different research, uh, different experiments. And so you do want to, oh, my computer's locking up here. Need to pause this render. So that's looking great. Uh, we'll just stop that. Um, so on some of this stuff, uh, so let's find another dielectric. Um, so I, so let's look at nickel. Uh, so cool. So you can see this, uh, I don't know how to say that, but the key here is that they were able to measure the wavelength uh, that you want. So I was actually trying to look at zinc on this website. So if you go to zinc, uh, the issue is you can see they were not able to measure those wavelengths for us. So they started at 1.23 and went to 10, and there's no other option here. So you can also find, uh, so like a lot of what we see is um, like the way they make brass is actually a combination of zinc sulfide and copper. And so you can try going to say zinc sulfide, and now with zinc sulfide, uh, they do have that information available. And so there, if you do some digging on this site, you may find some additional values, just so you know. Uh, but generally, you can get some really just beautiful metal shaders off of this. And uh, you may feel right now that I, I should have shown this right in the very beginning, but it is very important to be able to know how to make these shaders from scratch. And uh, you may be in a work situation where people do not want to use this. Uh, I'm not sure why, but it could happen. You never know. And so being able to go in and have an understanding of what's happening on these shaders and uh, dial them in by eye yourself without these techniques uh, of the open shading language. And hopefully in the future we'll all have something that's like this. Um, but, so yeah, uh, that that wraps up our metal section here. Um, I know it was pretty extensive, but uh, like I said before, you're going to be doing metal shaders all over the place as a look development artist, uh, whether it be in characters and armor and environments, uh, product stuff like cars or phones or whatever you're going to be doing, there's probably going to be metal somewhere in your life as a look dev artist. Uh, so I wanted to, I had one correction. I recorded this whole section and actually realized a small mistake that I made. And I also wanted to just clean up the files as I was working. After I was finished with my recording, I went back and I realized uh, some of the shaders I duplicated weren't duplicated correctly. So I wanted to go back and uh, get everything set up in a file uh, so that you have these four shaders as reference. First, let's look at the shaders. Um, so you can see now you've got, uh, everything is uh, named correctly. So we've got the copper I named. So we'll look at copper as an example. Make this a little bit bigger here. So we've got it named OSL Dirty Copper Bump. The shader itself is called OSL Dirty Copper. And its shading group is called OSL Dirty Copper. So what I forgot to do during this recording was on the actual shader, when you're dealing with these uh, open shading textures, you, you do have the Fresnel built in to the reflection color. It's doing all of the fall off. That's what we were talking about in the beginning, where there's those curves that are already in there. So I forgot to turn off my use Fresnel checkbox. I had the IOR at 5 for all of them, so they were all pretty bright. But generally speaking, uh, what this has done is it made it so that our render, um, the reflections are a little bit brighter, especially the gold. Um, on this shader, I dialed down the dirt even a little bit more so you could really see how beautiful that turned out. But um, this is just, it's such an awesome new thing uh, that V-Ray has inside of it. And so I just really wanted to make sure that this scene file came through for you and you had it uh, ready to go so you can use it in all sorts of other stuff. Um, so there's going to be four shader balls in this file. You can see I've renamed it. Uh, it'll be in the working files under Chapter 4 Material Types Metal OSL Lineup. And so you can just graph each one individually and check them out. I also did a, sm a couple small other things. Uh, like I mixed up the uh, grunge pattern a little bit so each one's slightly different. Uh, but overall, uh, I'm really excited about this and I hope you are too. So uh, have some fun with it. And... Uh, now we're going to move on to the uh, wood coming up next.